Now in this lecture, I'd like to look at a very important concept in electricity known as the electric field. Now before we define what an electric field is from a physicist's perspective, let's examine two things. Let's look at what the two words mean from an everyday English perspective and then let's examine how an electric field is represented on a diagram, on a sheet of paper. And that will help us define what an electric field is. So, what do the two words electric and field mean? Well, electric comes from electricity, which just simply means moving electrons, a current. So if we're talking about moving electrons, and electrons have an innate property known as charge, that means electric must mean charge. So what is the word field? Well, field is simply an area, right? A farmer is plowing his or her field. That means they're plowing some uh, piece of land, some area. So that means charge an area. So this electric field in everyday language should mean something like a charge creates a field. And that's exactly what is meant by an electric field. And we'll see that in a second. Now, let's look at what the word field means from a physicist's point of view. In other words, why do they use the word field? Well, basically, there are two types of forces. There are contact forces and non-contact forces. In other words, the very common forces that you're used to, the push or pull, are contact forces. In other words, if you push somebody or you pull on a door, you have to come in contact with that object. Only if you come in contact will you be able to exert a force. You can't just hold out your hand and say, you know, come to me or open the door. The door won't open. You'll have to actually physically pull the door or push a person or pull a person, right? Well, there are also forces called non-contact forces, such as the gravitational force or the electric force, electrostatic force, that does not require contact, physical contact. In other words, an electron will pull on a proton, and the proton will pull on an electron regardless if they're physically touching. Just like if I take this marker, let go, it will drop. It drops. Why? It drops because our mass, the Earth, pulls on this object, pulling it down. In other words, this marker is not touching the ground. There's nothing touching, or there's nothing uh, connecting this marker and my ground, my Earth. Right? Regardless, it still drops. And that means that these forces are non-contact forces. And a field is a concept, a man-made concept created by physicists to explain how forces act on object over a distance. And these could include gravitational, electric, or magnetic. We'll talk about magnetic in a little bit. So, how do you represent a field? Okay. Now, we just said that an electric field must be a field, some area created by a charge. That's exactly what it, what it is. So, if we take this charge, a positive charge, this charge will create a field. And whenever you place another charge, say another positive charge, next to or in the field that this charge creates, this charge will feel a force. And this force will push it away because two positive charges repel. And we see that an electric field extends outward from every charge, permeating all of space. So in other words, let's go back to our everyday definition of what an electric field is. We have a positive charge. And this positive charge creates something called field lines, which are also known as lines of force. And these field lines represent the electric field, and they are always perpendicular to the charge, and they never intersect. So, if you have our positive charge, this positive charge will create field lines, or lines of force, that extend radially outward, this way, this way, this way, this way, and they're always perpendicular to our surface of the charge. And these lines will extend forever. So now our field, the area, is actually an infinitely large plane. It's an infinitely large xy plane, right? Or xyz plane if we're looking at a sphere. 
And that means that these lines will extend on forever. But notice what happens as I take my charge and I move it on forever. Well, according to Coulomb's law, as our distance r between my Q charge and my Q charge between these two charges increases, our denominator becomes infinitely large. And that means as r tends to um, infinity, we know from calculus that our f will become zero or will tend to zero. So for example, if I place this charge on the edge of our universe, we can assume that that distance is infinitely far away, and so this charge will not feel any force due to this, uh, this charge, the larger charge, the Q charge. Now, so once again, these lines do not intersect, because if they did intersect, that would mean that the field or this object, this charge, creates a field in different directions, and that's not true. It creates, a, it creates a field in the same direction, always pointing outward, if it's a positive charge. So that means if we had a negative charge, like we have here, these guys would travel into our charge. In other words, field lines always travel from a positive to a negative, right? That's why if you place this guy, a positive charge here, these forces will push the charge away. But if you place a negative charge here, this force will attract it, attract our electron to the positive charge. And we can find the force with which it attracts it by using Coulomb's law. So now let's define what an electric field is. An electric field from a physicist perspective is defined as the force per unit charge. In other words, the force created by these two charges, by this charge and this charge, divided by this point charge, this Q. Not this Q, but this Q. So we get force, which is a vector, so our E, our electric uh, field must also be a vector, divided by a point charge, this guy, whatever charge you place within uh, the electric field of this charge. So, the units are Newtons over Coulomb. So, now I'd like to examine perhaps the most important detail about electric fields. So, let's examine the same type of system that we saw previously. We have one charge, the capital Q, that creates our field, these lines of forces representing our field, and we have a second positive charge, a point charge given by the lowercase q. Now, my question is the following. Does the electric field that this charge create depend on this charge or this charge or both charges? In other words, what's the relation of our electric field and this charge Q and this charge capital Q? So let's examine the formula for electric field. We said electric field is given by our force divided by our Q. And the force is Coulomb's force, Coulomb's law. So the force is given by k, a constant, times the charge of this, times the charge of this, divided by the distance between them squared. So let's represent this guy in terms of this. So we simply take out the q and we get 1 over q times our force. And now we plug in our Coulomb's equation into our force, and we get 1 over q times k, the constant, both charges times q times capital Q, divided by the distance between them squared. Now notice the small q and the small q cancel out. And that means we are left with the electric field is equal to a, a constant k times the charge of this guy, the charge that creates our field divided by the distance between that charge squared. In other words, this guy is not in our picture. This guy has absolutely nothing to do with our electric field. In other words, no matter how many charges I will place in this, in this uh, area, this charge or this electric field created by this charge will, be, will not be affected at all. What will be affected if I place more charges is the total electric field. And the total electric field is simply given by adding up the electric field of each guy. So if we have a system with four equally positive charges like this one, we're going to find or we find our total electric field 
by simply adding up the electric fields of all these four guys. And this is given by this formula here.